In this video we will learn how to use a new module which is the contrast equaliser and this module will allow us to add sharpening to a photo and what we will do for the very first time in this beginners tutorial is to apply the sharpening only to a small restricted portion of the image. OK, let's go. Let's add some sharpening on this photo of the bee with the lavender flower. So I'll double click on that to open it in the dark room and we find the pipeline that we constructed before going from the bottom which is the first thing that is done right up to the last one which is at the top. What we need to add now is a bit of sharpening on the flower maybe a little bit on the bee and what I'd like to avoid is any sharpening in the background which might just add um, artifacts, noise, unwanted things background's blurry anyway so there's no point in sharpening that. The module we use is called the contrast equaliser so either we can search for it in the search bar in the search bar if I can type in correctly contrast equaliser which is here or if you are in the scene uh, referred workflow you'll find it in the last one the last tab on the right which is effect. So contrast equaliser. Um, so here now the module we have a graph which is at 0, 0, 0, 0 in the centre which is what we expect to find. The idea being that if I push some of the nodes up then I'll get more contrast and if I push them down I'll get less. There is a difference however with the usual graphs we have where like on the histogram up here on the left um, the left side is uh, the dark, the black point, and as we go up we get brighter and brighter, so the white point on the right. This is very different because um, here we have on the left it's written coarse, and on the right we have the idea that it's fine. So how does that work? Well, really what the module does is it will add kind of a frequency mask on the whole picture before uh, making the modifications that we've asked for. So the frequency filter will be able to determine the areas of the photo where there is low frequency, which are the areas like in the background where everything is um, blurry, to the areas that have very high frequency, which are the areas that are going to be sharp. High frequency means that the um, the separation between the different colours, the different brightnesses are very small, they're very close together and here they will be very far apart. There are three tabs on this uh, contrast equaliser, one which is called Luma for luminosity, so contrast in, uh, contrast in luminosity. We can have contrast in chroma which adds contrast in the colours and contrast in the edges um, the third tab will only work if one of the two previous ones have been set. For today we're going to concentrate on the Luma tab which will enable us to sharpen uh, the photo. So um, we'll start moving this graph around and just to show you if I move the um, one of the nodes up on the left in the areas of low frequency what's called coarse and I'm going to move that up quite far you'll notice that in all the background of the photo we have the lights that have become lighter, the darks have become much darker so there has been a lot of contrast added. But If you notice the top of the uh, lavender flower there hasn't been any change at all. Um, so this uh, frequency mask is really only detecting the areas of low frequency and adding contrast to those and that is well, the exact opposite of what we do when we sharpen. Um, it's not very pretty either. Double click on that uh, we could use this actually to lower the frequency in the background and blur it out a bit. Um, the picture has much less contrast in those cases, but we do preserve the details in the areas of fine detail. Anyway, let's go back to the sharpening. The sharpening will be on this, on the right hand side here, where I'm going to add a bit of contrast. Just move that up a little bit. Add a bit of contrast in the areas of fine detail and the um, the picture is sharpened up quite nicely. 
And if you switch that off, you might notice better. Switch it off and on. And if you can't see the difference, let's zoom in with the mouse wheel. To just, just turn the mouse wheel and we can zoom in. And here we have, if we switch it off and on, you should be able to see the difference in sharpening. So that is sharp enough for me. I don't want to over sharpen the image. Um, what you can, however, see on the side here in the greens, uh, and I hope you can see this in the uh, in the video in the, on YouTube, um, we have added a significant amount of noise in the uh, in the greens here. Let's switch it off and on. I have added noise. That is because I'm adding some contrast. Um, also to the background with fine detail and it is obviously finding some fine detail in the back there um, so what I want to do is uh, limit that limit the sharpening just to the flower and to the bee to uh, lessen the effect on the background if you have a look also at the background uh, besides the noise problem if we have a look at the flowers here at the back with the purples the purple has got quite dark there and if I switch that off I should see, I'll, I'll move it up a bit because you can't see very well. If I add on a lot of sharpening, there, I'll switch it off and on, you will see that the background has become busy. The colours have changed. Um, the bokeh is less smooth. Now, I know I've added too much there. That's just to show what is actually happening. And, um, well, if there's just one effect on the photo, you might not notice, but as you pile the modules one on top of the other, then these effects can actually have a significant, um, make a significant difference to the photo. So there's some sharpening. I am actually going to crank up the sharpening a little bit too much, just so we can see what's happening. There. And we shall try and localise the sharpening just to this area, so we can uh, limit the effects in the background that we don't want and to do this we'll go to the underneath here you'll notice this on every module you have a bar here with a cross which means that there is no um, local mask um, here we have a uniform mask which just enable, enables us from 100% down to zero to reduce the effect of the module on the whole image and that works for every module if um, some kind of adjustment you've made is too strong, just click on this circle, bring it down a little bit, and that'll affect the whole the whole picture. What I'd like to do um, on this uh, photo is use a drawn mask. And when you click on the drawn mask, there's a whole lot of options that appear, and this can be quite daunting when you start on uh, dark table. So I'm just going to show you the one I use the most often and how I use it. The drawn mask means I'm going to draw something on the screen and the uh, module will only take effect in the part that I'm drawn. And um, the one I use the most is this one here which is Add Path. So I'll just select Add Path and then I'm going to draw around the flower. I can draw a little bit inside, just around, just by clicking and the path will automatically appear. And I'll do this quite quickly. I'll take a part of the bee with me there in the path. I want the, uh, the legs there to be sharp. It doesn't matter if I go a little bit into the background because as we've seen the effect is quite slight. Just click along and when you're finished, I think I went a little bit too far there, it doesn't matter. When you're finished, right click and the, um, the mask appears with a solid line. Inside the solid line, the effect will be 100%, and then it'll feather out to the dotted line, and after the dotted line, there will be no effect, so no sharpening here. Uh, if you want to see the mask in colour, we can go down to this little button at the bottom, which is the display mask button, and there it appears in yellow, and you can see the feathering off that's there. If the feathering isn't enough, press on shift on the keyboard and while you're inside the mask you need to be inside if you're outside it won't work you need to be inside the mask then you can change the feather with the mouse wheel now, if the mask is too big 
you can without clicking on anything, no keys, just the mouse wheel make it slightly smaller and with that we can try and adjust the mask to the shape we really want to sharpen. To help a little bit I, I often use this feathering radius which I move up and that will help to try and follow the shape of the uh, flower and the bee there and that looks fine to me. If I remove the mask um, so I can see now that sharpening is only on the flower there's no sharpening whatsoever outside of the mask that was just drawn. Now this uh, drawn mask can be a bit of a bother there is here um, a little button show and edit mask elements if I click on that it disappears and there we are, I don't know what that was um, so that's a contrast equalizer off and on you can see there that it's sharpened um, so that's too much really for the real photo I'll just bring that down and there we've done the sharpening on that um, so there we are for this photo with the bee I'd like to show you now very quickly um, some sharpening on the photo of the dog here. Um, so contrast equalizer, the last um, tab on the right there, click on contrast equalizer. And there is a preset that has been um, uh, made with, that's included in Darktail which is sharpen here. But the sharpen, I find that the effect is very strong, far too strong for me. So what you can do is make the effect stronger or weaker. So I'll make it just a bit weaker. There we are. And you can use that. Or what you can do, and it's what I have really done, is I usually disable all sharpening on everything up to about there maybe just a little there and I have a slight curve here I'll just with the mouse wheel and shift press just make that circle a little bit smaller so I can just move one of the little tabs at a time without touching the others and then I store a new preset here store a new preset and then, uh, uh, and then use that one uh, I do actually have one here I have it in French there out of the name, there we are, the preset you see it's just a little slight curve and then very quickly click on the pen choose add path click around the dog try and get the areas of detail, there's a bit of the ground I'd like to have sharpened um, just move around right click to finish and then I always look at the mask and feather it out. There we are. Go inside the mask, maybe make, make the feather just slightly bigger, just to make sure I have everything. And there we are. Done. That is sharpened. And if you're not convinced, let's zoom in 100% and have a look at this picture, which is a little bit noisy, but remove sharpening and add sharpening and there there is just enough sharpening. Um, I can show you quickly because of the noise you can see here on the uh, on this image which is I think yes it's written there 2500 ISO and I'm on an APS-C uh, sensor. This uh, contrast equalizer can also be used to remove noise. Now there is a module that will remove noise with an automatic detection of the uh, camera and the ISO. Um, but this works actually quite well. Remove noise in the Luma and remove noise in Chroma. Um, I don't use the Chroma tab very much because I find that the effects are very startling and when you move things up and the colours will get very bright very quickly. Very strange. I don't use that very much. What I do use though is I have, there is another curve underneath here that's hidden. Now I did have problems getting that curve off the ground because it is at zero because I used to try and click on these triangles and you don't do that, you click just above the line 
click with the mouse and move up and there you see there's a new curve that appears and this and grab hold of that I'm going to make the circle a bit bigger by pressing on shift now move that up and there I am actually removing some chroma noise which are the colourful dots that are a bit annoying in a photo. I don't mind so much um, photos with, with a bit of grain but in digital the chroma noise is a bit ugly so if I click that off and on now that's off and that's on. I don't know if you can see the difference it's sharper and there are less of those strange colours I can um, do the same with Luma I'll make this circle nice and big with a shift button try and grab somewhere just above the, tri the triangles there and the new curve appears and there I can remove some noise once the curve's appeared so noise will be typically in the areas of fine detail so the high frequency areas so there's um, you don't want to blur the photo completely and there we are I have removed the noise so if I click on contrast equalize you can see in the areas here I have some dots of strange colours, blues and, and greens um, and here they have disappeared and some sharpening has appeared too and if I don't think it's sharp enough now I can add a little bit of extra sharpening and yeah, I'll make it there so I think that's done for that photo there you see, off so a bit of noise, not very much sharpening and there it's added on and let's move backwards. Uh, and there is zero effect on the outside of the shape I made. So if I really wanted to remove noise, I should actually do that globally on the photo. But there, I've shown you how to remove a little bit of noise with uh, the contrast equalizer. Well, that does it for this video, and um, I'll uh, see you soon.